All right, we're back for another episode of Arizona Craft Beer Review, and this time we are at Uncle Bear's here with Todd and Drew. Drew. Hello, hello. So excited to be here. Uh, Matt and I are going to be sharing a mic due to technical difficulties, so he's just going to stand back and drink. (laughs) Not a bad job. That's right. I'll I'll step to the mic here. So, Todd Carey, let's start with Todd. Very special guest here. Thank you guys for allowing us. Uh, Thanks for coming. The Uncle Bears and Gilbert, the brewery location. You guys have six locations around the valley. This is where all the magic happens for beer making, right? So, uh, Todd, let's start with you. I mean, it's one of the oldest breweries now in Arizona. Where do you guys where do you guys rank in that? Uh, what do we rank in? Yeah, I mean, like you what? Uh, I think what Barrio's probably the oldest, and then yeah, maybe I think Four so. Peaks. You got Four and... Peaks. You got Santan. Uh, yeah, we've been around a while. You know, we've been around. We actually started as a just a, a bar and grill back uh, May of uh, May uh, 26 of 2000, believe it or not. My gosh, we're coming up on 23 years this summer. So, you know, the uh, initial vision was to have bar and grill, neighborhood place, and where uh, all kinds of people and the four-legged animals could come as well, and we could all hang out and and basically be a neighborly place. Uh, About 10 years ago, we decided, uh, well, let's go ahead and get in the craft beer scene. You know, I think there's a need here. Uh, There's, uh, we already have the platform. We already have the operation. Why don't we produce beer and sell it to ourselves? And so the, the you know our craft our craft beer Uncle Bear's craft beer started ten years ago, but the brand started nearly twenty three years ago. It's been an amazing transition. It's been a whole lot of hard work. I got to tell you that, as anyone in the industry will tell you, wow, the restaurant industry is is enough for you know most people to handle. You know that's juggling a lot of plates as it is. But you throw a brewery into the mix, and then self distribute, and then go to the market. Wow, that's a whole lot going on there. So that's why my hair is great. Today, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm a I'm a believer that Uncle Bear's is one of the more underrated breweries in in the state, and I think that's because maybe what most people get, you know, uh, what you distribute is not always what you have. You know, you have a lot more in in your tap rooms than what right. you distribute, right? Exactly. So, what you know, give us give us a little a little idea of what you guys have on tap that people might not, you know, might not see when they go buy a six pack at a gas station. Sure. At our uh, grill and taps, uh, we'll have uh, anywhere from 14 to 16 handles, all fire hydrate handles, all Uncle Bear's draft beer. If you want to get something like a Bud Light or something, sorry, you're going to get a bottle and you're going to pay premium price for it. But uh, uh, here at the brewery, we'll have 19 to 20 beers on tap. So we have a, a real nice variety and something you know, a, a nice add to what our distributor would have for the marketplace. You can come to an Uncle Bear's and, and get a whole lot more variety. I'm going to let Andrew answer the question in terms of actually talking about the beer and, and the styles and and answer that question yeah we got drew ortega the head brewer drew how long have you been here and kind of um talk us through kind of your craft beer journey here in arizona um i've been with uncle bears for seven years going on seven years now um started off my professional career with the perch in downtown chandler uh, i was there for about two and a half years with andrew bauman um and then prior to that, I mean, just like any other uh, head brewer, um, kind of just, you know, started uh, home brewing in 2000. My uh, girlfriend at the time, now my wife, um, we went and visited her sister in St. Louis and we took a t- tour of uh, Anheuser-Busch and I was kind of just in awe. And her sister was um, home brewing at the time, um, had some really robust um, staff outs and porters that they were making are really good and um that year i ended up getting a homebrew kit and it was pretty much that's where the love started for me love that i've I, uh, I've done taken that tour as well, and it, it's really, really impressive. Uh, you know, two million liters a day or something yeah. like that, and it all tastes exactly the same. Like it's, it's very impressive that, that they're able to do that. Uh, did you start off with like a Mr. Beer kit or? Uh, no, she actually spent the money and got me a, a really nice kit. Oh, that's so awesome! I had a nice kit coming out the gate, and then we moved to Arizona in 2005, and um, I didn't know anybody here. We just wanted to start a family and cost of living was a lot cheaper than San Diego. So, uh, that's the reason why we moved out here. But, um, and then uh, shortly after that, I, um, joined Ash and really just kind of dived into, um, the ins and outs of brewing. 
um that's, that's awesome. kind of where it went so yeah i mean you, you guys opened the brewery itself 10 years ago uh 10 years ago the arizona craft beer scene was a totally different landscape than it, it is sure now it is right uh, what you know what's been your experience over the last 10 years in terms of how it's grown and how how that how you guys have been, have been a part of that yeah it's been it's been a wild ride for sure you know there there are a ton of breweries out there now and, it, and it's great you know it's uh, you know, kudos to uh to the guild and for everything they do to to drive uh you know local craft beer in the state of arizona arizona you know rob fulmer and andrew bauman over there working hard and and driving it forward and and even more so now which is super cool uh but yeah it's been it's been a it's been a crazy journey and it's always sad when you do see maybe some that don't make it because it is a, such a challenge challenging uh marketplace uh there's a lot of moving pieces you have a hu human resource uh you know ish not issues but there's just uh, you know just just you know finding employment throughout the you know the state is difficult but uh but we've been quite blessed been real blessed with great people people that love working for uncle bears and love to stay at uncle bears as as drew has for seven years but you know the the beer scene has changed so much and you go to even all these little, little towns now are throwing up little nano breweries and stuff and it's pretty cool when you go in and you try this different stuff and, and i would say from when we got into it just the styles you know have changed so much and then people have gotten real creative and, and innovative uh, you know i was living in san diego back in 2012 and 2013 i would i was, still had the company and we were thinking about opening up the brand over there uh, and, and something always kept coming up here but i'd come back and forth here every 28 days still running the company and but i was drinking all these crazy you know you know, beers you'd walk into a little beer bar and you look up and on the chalkboard it was like you know 60 different beers from all over the state and the surrounding states all these different styles and you're like what is that i don't even know what that is and ibus and abv was and you're so high you're like wow i got a triple ipa i've never had one of those that's pretty amazing my wife hate me today because <laughs> i had like three of them no. <laughs> but uh you know and so when i'd come back to uh Arizona from, uh, you know, uh, for my business trips, I, I was like looking at our handles. I'm like, we're just drinking the same old stuff, you know, but I, back then we had Bud Light, we had Coors Light, we had Miller Light and we sold a ton of that. And uh, again, being a, uh, you know, kind of a, a restaurant pioneer here, you know, at that time it was, you know, 13 years in, you're like, gosh, you know, there's, there's gotta be something better that we can do here. So why don't we just kind of create it ourselves, bring it to life. So surround ourselves with some people, made it happen, finally opened the brewery. Uh, that was quite a journey. Opening restaurants enough work. You, you throw the brewery into it, and those moving pieces. Holy crap! But <laughs> our first brew, I think the the, the guy uh, that was on our team at the time, it's like he uh, like the, he, he spilt it. <laughs> a lot of it, <laughs> it went out in the restaurant. It was crazy. Oh, so yeah, yeah, there was a little bit of a mistake uh, there. But uh, so we we lived and learned real quick. But you know, we made that uh, when I'd come back and, and try that beer, I was like why don't we try this and let's do our own product. And we, we went for it and we, we got the right facility with an 8,000 square foot retail location in Ahwatukee there, Ray and I 10. The vision was to basically just create beer for ourselves and sell it over our own bars. Uh, we had a little uh, seven barrel brew house. Uh, you know, we had enough fermentation uh, for ourselves. We had enough, uh, you know, uh, tanks for ourselves and to produce beer for ourselves. Uh, and But it was it was such a leap. Uh, it was like rolling the dice. It's like, okay, are we really going to do this? All of our restaurants are making money. Are we now going to take those handles down that have been there? We're talking like Queen Creek, Mesa, Bud Light. Coors Light drinkers, and you know, and, and and a big amount of it. Are we gonna we can roll that dice? Well, we decided to take the plunge, and we did, and it was pretty amazing. And I get chills thinking about it because that was so risky. But I've always been risky. I'm in the restaurant industry, right? <laughs> but uh, we did it, and you know, we had some knee jerk negative reaction. Some people loved it. Some people didn't get it. They're like, "What the hell? What the hell are you doing? You're taking Bud Light off? You an idiot? You're, you're taking you know." You took, you know, maybe another local off and put it up your own fire hydrant handle. Well, we did it. We stuck to it. We stayed committed to it and we got better at it. So our beer over the years has definitely improved. Our team has improved. Drew's doing an amazing job, just really killing it. We got, I think today is the strongest brew team that we've had and strongest synergy going on in the marketplace as well. We're real proud of it, but we did. We took that plunge one day. We made it happen and I, I have no regrets. Uh, I look back, but you know, we, 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 and then we'd made 
made another step to where, okay, now it's all Uncle Bear's draft beer. It, there was a point where we did that. So that was another step. And then we came to the point going, wow, we're producing all this out of a retail location. And, uh, excuse me, and we basically are getting uh, approached by a distributor that thinks our beer is good enough to go to marketplace and throughout the state. So uh, we, we, we partnered up with Young's at the time, our NDC now, uh, Wayne popped in and, 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 and sold me on that they would be a great distributor for us and they're our partner today. And uh, we said, let's go for it. So then we, well, prior to that, we actually built up a hundred accounts that we were serving ourselves, 100 to 150 accounts. Wow, what a lot of work that was. Like chase it. It's like micromanaging the hell out of everything. Yeah. You know, you're calling on people to deliver and stuff. You, you, you've got a little box truck. You're trying to do all this stuff. One day we said, we got to go back to the original plan or we need to move forward on a different plan. Yeah. So we decided to go ahead and add more tanks, got in bed with a distributor, and then we beat the hell out of that location, tearing up the walls, the floors. Uh, we said, we'll never can. Well, next thing you know, we're doing Mobile West canning at middle of the night and tearing up floors more so by moving pallets of, you know, 100 cases of beer around. Uh, and we did that. We're like, wow, that's really expensive. So then we bought a canning line. <laughs> now we've carved out part of our restaurant for a canning operation. Now we're confusing the marketplace on, I think, Tuesdays. We would close for lunch. We didn't open until 4 o'clock. And so people are like, why are you close for lunch? Oh, production day. We're canning. I said, I'd never do it. Here I am doing it. Uh, and so we came to the point going, do we really want to do all this out of this location? Do we want to go back to the original model? Or do we want to go plow forward and get in the right facility? That has a logistics, has a safety, has a silo for uh, efficiency, has a dock, has a bigger cold, you know, uh, cold storage, and let's do it. Let's do it right. And that was now another big project. So, and then making that transition from not losing on your production schedule and all that and, and losing in the marketplace, making that transition from that old location to this location and trying to pull off a Costco order at the same time out of the new facility, mind blowing experience. I've been through some crazy shit. That, that, that was pretty crazy. But again, no regrets. Took a few years off my life, but here I am today. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, let's remember not to do that again. Yeah, we're never going to. Well, we wanted to get a place that was big enough that we didn't have to do it again so we have eighteen thousand square foot something we can grow into we're actually expanding the tap room right now we have a, a new kitchen that's going in and should be opening here by uh, valentine's day you're, you're like the uh, people we feature in our um sister publication phoenix home and garden like i always got to be re renovating and building something <laughs> bigger and better right <laughs> right yeah <laughs> um so we we did a uh uh a beer review over the summer leading up to the Arizona Craft Beer Awards where we talked about Uncle Bears on one of the uh, episodes and uh, I, I told Johan it, that your beers bring have a lot of nostalgia for me because when I first started getting into craft beer it was I would find Uncle Bears obviously you guys distributed uh, and you can find yourself all over the state right and I, I would always go and seek out the three big ones right Ocean Beach West Coast IPA that beer was so good um, going camping because when you drive up and you're setting up tent, you know, at noon or one o'clock and the, the sun and, you know, and Flagstaff is still kind of beating down until those clouds roll in, that that beer tastes so great and nice. so crisp and clean. And then sitting around the campfire at night, it was Barclays Peanut Butter Porter. Ooh, and uh, and then it was the, the Mandarin Wheat, which, you know, my wife liked. And so those were like the three beers we always stocked up in our cooler for camping. Awesome. So Uncle Bear's always has that kind of like nostalgia. I remember those kind of beers. Um, and that that was it for me. You know, it was setting up camp, enjoying the campfire and, you know, keeping the wife happy at, on the campsite. So very good. good uh, story. I, yeah, I've always I've always liked Uncle Bears um, for that for that aspect. And I guess I started off the episode a little bit incorrect because it's kind of fun to to, to know your story a little bit more that it was a restaurant beer pub type place without your beer for a while and then you started introducing your own beer um so back to drew and kind of your beer story drew when you first start brewing beer do you remember the first beer you ever made was it any good and then what how long did it take you to make an actually good beer and then how long did it actually take to make it a, a a beer that you thought you could actually i could sell this um, yeah, I, my first beer was a, um, 
there used to be a beer called Red Nectar. Um, it was, I believe, brewed on the same property as Firestone Walker, um, but it was kind of an offshoot of their brands. Um, they, I think they might have even just brewed it for Trader Joe's. Um, and I love that beer. Um, it was malty. It had um, a nice malty backbone and hops were present. Um, it was kind of a mesh of the two. Not quite a, a West Coast, but not quite your red. Um, so I kind of try to mimic that. Um, it came out decent. It was drinkable. Um, it's just repetitive and hitting all your marks, hitting your times, your temperatures and everything. But you know, that comes with repetitiveness, um, getting better, hitting your times and knowing what you're working with. Um, and then after that, it was mainly IPAs. Um, I did a lemongrass IPA that we used to do at the perch every so often, but that one was to me, um, citra was really new. Um, mosaic was just kind of, it didn't even have a name at the point at this point. And I used a lot of local honey, um, for the ABV. It, to me, it smelled like fruit loops. Um, my wife would drink it and it was high ABV. So cheap date. Um, I loved making that beer. Um, I think we're going to do an iteration of that this year here. Um, just cause we, I kind of pulled our mutts uh, double IPA from our portfolio. It just wasn't, it was kind of just sitting, not selling uh, through it fast enough. So we'll do more of a, like a one-off. Was that, that was the mutts nuts, yeah. that beer. I mean, that's a fantastic name. How could we pull that? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I do all the tracking for our distributor and I see it dying on the shelves. That's, beer abuse to me <laughs> so you so you've been here for you said six or seven years i'm going on seven yeah so you're going on seven years mm -hmm. so in those seven years like what what you know what what recipes have you sort of developed and changed what what things have you ex, you know uh introduced like what's what's your impact here so um far? Uh, quality Sorry. control i mean yeah. um i'm constantly tasting um making tweaks to everything um from operations to yeast strains um really for example tio our mexican lager it's a true mexican lager we lager it um we're using a spunding valve to recapture um co2 and get that soft mouth feel that you want on a lager um really been over the last probably year and a half dialing that one in um Ocean Beach, same. We're currently going to switch over from our two row silo fills to uh, North Star Pills. So that'll be our base. I think um, that'll just kind of really help accentuate the hops that we use in Ocean Beach. Um, just keep those in the forefront of the beer um, where they should be. Um, so just little tweaks like that. And then our hazy. Um, you know, it's it's a newer style of beer, so really dialing that in, you know, making sure you don't get that astringency that with the amount of hops that we're using, um, really watching pH and. Um, but I've been playing with different yeast strains with that for quite a while. Uh, I feel like we have it dialed in with our Kvike yeast. Um, we don't have we don't have that issue of it clearing up with that specific strain at a higher temperature and you're getting that for those fruity esters that you want in a hazy um so just really tweaking with that every so often and then i'm really proud of our sour program um at some point i would like to get to a point where we um uh, start barrel aging some of our sours mm. and just transition to that just because i i feel like uh the stability of our sours is second to none i mean when we're kettle souring we're within 0.2 of a degree so you don't have that fluctuation you're just really dialing that 
uh, flavor profile in. And I love that about our system. Uh, I think that's a plus on a steam jacketed system, which is what we have. What's super cool is I hear uh, Drew talk about uh, all the details of the beers and stuff. I just can think uh, back about this seven, last seven years and how much he's grown uh, and uh, just his passion for knowledge and his passion for ongoing learning, no matter where the information comes from. He, he's all about collaborating. He's all about asking other brewers and other successful people that, uh, you know, how they do things. Uh, and he's all about, you know, reading, following up on it, going to seminars. We're sending a, our entire team. Uh, even our marketing person out to a craft brewers conference this year in Nashville. So uh, they're going to come back with a wealth of knowledge. And, and I just love that about him and his spirit of craft beer and wanting to always be better and, and know that we can get better every day. And you asked, or you brought it to a point up earlier about uh, maybe we don't have the respect that uh, we should, that we deserve a you know, local craft beer. But I think part of that is a, a contributing factor to that is that we started as a restaurant restaurant and we did 10 years of being local favorite on the restaurant scene selling all these other beers and then you make this bold transition and i don't think some people out of the gate gave us a little respect because of that but i think we've changed some uh we've, we've turned some heads along the way and and uh the games it's a new game now and uh the, the products quality it's consistent it's been fun they're always uh and i love when they can put their creativity to work and bring some new styles i know we have to you know brew x y and z and an x amount of, uh, x amount of it but when they can you know put their uh uh, their talents to work on new uh, recipes and bringing things to life. It's, it's pretty, it's, that's where the magic happens. Yeah. We, uh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, we had, we had, uh, before this started and during it, um, Johan and I both had a taster of the new, uh, or I guess it's Debo's, uh, sour double IPA. You guys do that every strong beer week, um, with 1912, right? Yep. This is the sixth year for that beer. And um, this is like, you're talking about the sours, like there aren't a whole lot of sours that i would say like i want to drink that all night because sometimes it's, it's one sour and then i need to move on and drink something that maybe i can have another one or two like i can have multiples of the like it is and, you know johan we use it we use the word balance i know that's you know every beer needs to be balanced but um like it it is truly a unique combination of sour and it, it's it's a little bit more sour than double ipa it you know so to speak but it it's really really well done and one that i would want to reorder yeah a hundred percent i mean that's a big thing that I've noticed, especially here, uh, interact a lot with the tap room after hours, um, especially on Fridays. Um, but it's a very approachable beer. Um, it's funny cause we get a lot of guests that come in here and, um, some ladies will be say, you know, I don't, I will not touch a IPA. Well, do you like cocktails? Do you like, um, tart drinks try this oh my gosh this is fantastic what is this sour ipa what you're kidding me how what's the abv 8.3 percent what no <laughs> um just mind blown all the way around well we were we were talking about that before we started recording it was i think uh for me the sour ipa was the gateway to getting into ipas right because the sourness sort of made the the hoppiness a little more palatable when i didn't like hoppiness and mm -hmm. then it sort of allowed me to to explore more into hoppy ipa so when i drank yours it totally brought back that that uh that sort of memory of you know just trying my first epic tart and juicy and being like oh like i i, I taste the hops but I like the sourness too. And then sort of, you know, going from there. So super, is that your recipe from the ground up or? No, that was a collab with, um, 1912. That's right. Um, it's pretty straightforward as far as, um, the grain bill goes. Um, the one thing that we do, like I said, we're always kind of trying to make it better every year. Um, we did do use the Kvike strain on this one. I wanted um, the hops to come forward on it. Um, we also, we generally use uh, El Dorado, Amarillo, Amarillo Citra, um, which we used Amarillo and, or El Dorado and Citra this year. But uh, I got a, what is it? YQH 1320 
um, experimental hop that uh, we've used on a hazy that was fantastic. Brought a ton of just passion fruit and guava notes to that um, Debo's this year, which I'm really excited about. That experimental hop might be my um, Wi-Fi password too. I <laughs> don't copy that. <laughs> um, so Beer Week, that's that's the big release here for you guys. What else is going on for Beer Week or Beer? I guess it's uh, dry January is over, right? You guys, yeah, you guys, I, you guys I, like I, that at I, all? Or? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it, it, it ended at noon. Yeah, we, we get rid of dry, dry January. <laughs> I think January I made it two. a whole two days, but yeah. Um, and then like Super Bowl and Waste Management Phoenix Open, like it really Locked big month on. here, right? For you guys? Yeah. You know, this is going to be our eighth annual Pints for Paws campaign. This is something that we partner with the Arizona Humane Society, which is uh, definitely our go-to for support. Uh, we, uh, we've got our Pints for Paws uh, shirts here. and The guys uh, got some today, which is super cool. Right up in the and camera if you're watching on YouTube. Um, hopefully, I think it it's backwards, but Arizona Humane Society, you guys can yeah, see that. Yeah, yeah. So partners, this is, partners of ours for other events, too. So awesome. we're very excited Absolutely. to support them. Yeah, they're great. And so last year, we uh, I think it was uh, about that uh, we uh, donated over $14,000 from our uh, Arizona Beer Week campaign. This year would be great if we can get to up to 20,000. What we do basically uh, from that Thursday through that you know, following Sunday, what's it, what's it this year? 16th through the 26th, I believe. Strong beers on the 18th. Uh, but what we do is for at a, all of our locations, all six of our retail locations, because we have a tap room here uh, with kitchen and stuff at the brewery, but uh, we are going to give $1 towards every Uncle Bear's beer purchase, whatever it is. It's it's a dollar going towards Humane Society. We also sell these little cool little uh, paws that have $2, $5, or $10 on it. People write their name on it. It's a donation from our guests, and we buy them as well. We adorn all of our walls throughout uh, all the retail locations uh, during that time with people buying these. It's amazing when you walk in just after the first couple of days and they're everywhere and people really get behind it. You get a donation bucket back behind the bar. Uh, and then our big party, kind of the big uh, final push is on that Saturday the 25th at all locations. Uh, we donate 15% of all sales uh, f- uh, from 11 to 4 that day. And then Humane Society comes out to about three of our locations here at the brewery we're gonna have a big party that day we have a live band that evening uh, and we're actually gonna have some adoptable pets here that day which is gonna be super great so great partners of ours there's other we also give five dollars back on all t-shirts uh, it's a big thing for us it's it's you know for us it's a great way that we love to celebrate uh, Arizona beer week uh, is to give back and uh, you know uh, for our concept bear was my dog uh, what a what a great way to give back to a you know a local uh, charity and and you know someone that's out there working hard to take care of these you know unwanted uh, and you know pets that you know need support and what we do then at the end of that campaign we calculate everything up we go down there take them a check we have a big check kind of drafted up that we can like hold and we take all of our managers down there all the managers that brought it to life at the retail units we take it down to the humane society they give us a tour they even take us through their medical uh center to where uh, people are where the doctors are active uh, you know actively you know uh you know operating on a dog or a cat or whatever animal and uh it's pretty powerful when you see the and i get a little emotional about it but when you see the 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 faces of our leadership their faces light up and the emotions they go through because they know they're giving back to, uh, you know, such an awesome cause uh, and, and how that money is going to work. So and it's our it's our guests and our clientele that get behind it as well, uh, because that's 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 where a, a lot of magic happens right there. And, and everyone just comes together and has a, a lot of fun uh, that week and celebrate and have some beers. Tip of such a great concept, you know, <laughs> combining the the love that people have for man's best friend and, and beer, too. It's like you can't go wrong with dogs at a brewery. Right? Right. Um, the we were talking off camera before we recorded about uh, the inspiration for the one you're drinking there, Ocean Beach, right? right, right. Ocean Beach, West Coast. So there's this great if you ever go to Ocean Beach, it's like you drive in on the eight and you just get there and it like the eight takes you right to Ocean Beach. And there's this Take great <laughs> dog beach that just like, yeah just get on the eight right that's all you need and then boom you're right there there's a human beach on one side and then there's right. a dog beach and uh i was showing you a picture of my weimariners five years old a couple years ago we took him there and he he's usually doesn't like get along or not get along but he doesn't like 
socialize out in like dog parks or anything. But on ocean on the ocean beach dog beach, man, he went wild all day. Loved the ocean. We weren't quite sure. And it's great because like every dog there gets along, right? Is that your always been your experience? It really has. So uh, so I went to Texas Tech University to study restaurant hotel management. When I graduated, my wife and I, uh, well, girlfriend at the time, and we were high school sweethearts. But anyway, uh, we moved to Ocean Beach up on the hill, and we both worked for the Chart House Corporation. She was working for the Paradise Bakery Division, and, and I was opening all the very first islands restaurants uh, wow. in San Diego. So that's kind of where my big corporate experience Are started. Are the islands coming. still out here? Or, or they, they have, gone? I think, two yeah, out here. Uh, currently, okay, yeah, that one and uh, well, the Tatum one off of uh, anyway, uh, yeah, Tatum off Tatum, I think, and then they've got one out uh, west in Avondale, so yeah. the two, uh, but uh, yeah, so I opened the first uh, uh, islands in the area there, and uh, what a, what a fun experience we're after college living <laughs> in Ocean Beach, man. We used to go down to uh, uh, OB Bar and Grill, it's no longer there, it's an Irish bar now, but and we would take bear, so I got bear in college, and bear was a, my black lab and obviously what our concept is is driven uh for but uh from and uh so we would take bear and bear was so cool like my wife maybe had to work on a tuesday and i had a tuesday off so this is how my tuesday went which was awesome man i, I need to have these experiences more <laughs> i need to get back to these experiences and live that life but i would wake up bear and i i'd throw on basketball shoes i'd take my ball i took roller blades took a change of clothes and i'd go down and i'd play a couple hours of basketball then we put on the rollerblades and he would just run next to me. We would go all the way from OB over, excuse me, over the bridge through Mission Beach, PB, all the way up to the tip of La Jolla, rollerblade and him riding it running next to me. And then all the way back, we'd start hitting some some beer bars and, and start having some beers. And then at five o'clock, we would land right there at OB Bar and Grill. My wife would get off and we'd have a Portland, Oregon honey with a little squeeze of lemon. So that was kind of the craft beer in the area then, right? <laughs> the Portland, Oregon honey. I don't think it's out there anymore. I don't know. but uh, And we would have a few of those and we'd have a blackened chicken sandwich and bear without a leash would sit out on the uh, sidewalk and just sit there and look at us going, okay, it's been a great day, dad. Cool. <laughs> and then we'd go home, you know, eight o'clock, whatever. And that was my day off, man. That was, that was so magic there. That was awesome. That sounds like a great day. And so that's where the ocean beach, West coast style, uh, IPA came from was because bear and I spent a lot of, a lot of days, a lot of hours out there at dog beach. So that was and, super cool. When you show me the picture. <laughs> and I, I love that. That's like the, the, the basis of the, obviously the name of the brewery. You said, uh, Debo's is your dog. Yeah, so you guys are bringing in like the, the dogs into all you know all aspects of the business Barkley was so our cool. chocolate lab uh, oh, through awesome. the years peanut butter cup porter <laughs> okay so here's here's the question one of my favorite uh beer mixtures which and not a lot of people do these but i'll take um it's a san diego brewery it's uh uh belching beavers peanut butter milk stout there you uh, go and i'll mix it with the nordic jam from uh who makes Nordic Jam? I, I can't remember the name of the brewery, but it's it's like a raspberry elderberry beer. And it's just like peanut butter and jelly. Oh so my gosh! There you go. If if you guys ever come out with like a like a raspberry or some sort of berry beer, I bet you mixing it with your uh, Barclays would be a yeah. You missed it. We uh, do a lot of one offs here. Oh yeah. So I did uh, PB and J. Basically, I took our uh, Barclays and then I jammed it up with some blueberries and raspberries. Oh, man. If you ever do that again, you got to yeah. let me know. You got to let me know. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better than a peanut butter and jelly craft uh, burger at Uncle Bear's with a, with a little side of peanut butter cup porter. I love that. <laughs> By the way, I just tried the uh, peach Berliner. I know we were talking about your Berliner ice uh, yeah. series. Divine. Nice. Really good. Yeah, he tried it. He drank the whole thing. Um, <laughs> what much of a I, I I can't t- taste or, or tell you anything about that because he had the whole thing. Uh, I do have the the foggy doggy. What's that like? A, I get a lot of coffee on coffee that. Coffee milk stuff. Co- yeah. Coffee milk set. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, I always like that when the coffee kind of um, surprises you because I I wasn't familiar with that beer, but it's it's really there on the nose and right up front on the flavor too. Yeah, that uh, I love that beer. Um, we use infusion. Uh, out of Tempe. Oh yeah, their uh, coffee. I'm a huge. We're on Main Street. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of them. Um, Master Roaster there. I don't know if anybody knows that, but uh, he's a, he actually helped us. Um, 
prepare the uh, coffee that we use. We use Papua New Guinea in that. Um, gives it a nice chicory notes to it, um, and it just complements that beer really well. Um, we have changed that a bit um, over the last few years. Um, the one thing we do do is uh, we use whole beans, um, kind of like dry hopping for that nose. Um, my wife's a huge coffee fan, so that's her favorite beer. Um, so I don't ever want to screw that one up. <laughs> no, it's really good and it's real smooth. Um, sometimes with coffee stouts, I feel like you can get a little bit of that like astringency. coffee astringency yeah. and it's super, super smooth. Uh, it's, del- it's delightful and like light bodied too. So it's like kind of crushable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we use cold brew, so I feel like that really kind of lightens the body up. Yeah. Um, we make the cold brew fresh in house and then. Like I said, we uh, dry hop with six pounds of uh, whole beans. Love that. Todd, you mentioned the the burger just a minute ago. What's kind of the go-to food item for you guys here at Uncle Bear's? Uh, I tell you what, we do a real unique burger. It's uh, it's like a old uh, old fashioned style. Instead of a charbroil burger, we do kind of a kind of chop it out on a flat grill. You throw the buns on it. You rotate the buns. You get all those juices come together with the cheese, with maybe the barbecue sauce, whatever you're adding to it, or we have just original that just has the cheese and stuff but uh that's definitely a go-to and people are blown away about how it's different it's unique but it is it's old school st- uh, and there's a story behind that and so there's a place i grew up in dallas texas and in jacksboro texas two hours away uh kind of on the uh, past denton if you will west of denton small town probably 3,400 people today. Uh, this place called uh, Herd's Burgers. It's been around since 1916. And so my parents grew up going there. My parents grew up together, went to elementary school. They were high school sweetheart, uh, like my, my wife and I. But they uh, they lived about a mile apart from each other. But Herd's Burger was right there in the town. To this day, they, they don't have a phone. All you do is show up and order it. You can take it in a brown bag home if you want. You can sit on old Coke crates. You can grab your own chips off the wall. Grab your own uh, bottle soda. Uh, a real simple place, but so and so we know the owners, and they've gone through generations and generations of family leading that place. But it's so cool because I brought that to life at Uncle Bear's when we first opened, and because uh, I was making them at home and I was pretty handy at it, and I said, "Well, I'm going to bring it to life," and I I shared it with them. I'm like, I'm going to put this on the menu. And they're like, that's cool. All right. And I gave them a shirt and I, they put it up. Uh, when my dad passed away, great story. The uh, funeral home is right down the street. Less, I don't know, a couple of football fields down the street uh, on the main street there. And uh, when so the church there, uh, this was uh, 18, 19 years ago, same day Bear died. Matter of fact, two hours apart, my dad and my bear died within two hours it was really a horrible day but uh we uh (laughs) when we were had a service and the church was putting on a big gig and they like okay all this food food spread everywhere but our goal was that we were going to go to Herzberger afterwards and get burgers in 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 memory of my father and so we're all walking through don't eat much of that food we're going to Herzberger (laughs) don't eat much food and uh sure enough we all showed up there was probably 30 or 40 of us at uh Herzberger and we're all sitting out on the back of the trucks out in the you know gravel parking lot eating herds burgers and having some cold beers out there you know i had brought and stuff and uh anyway we uh uh, sat out there and uh, it was a very first and only day that the owner bought me a burger <laughs> but my dad's name's on the wall there is pretty cool so that's one of them to go to is that uh, here at the brewery we're going to have uh, pizzas we used to do pizzas back at the restaurants uh, just for operational reasons you know and we have such a big menu and, and volume of that we decided to get away from pizzas but we're bringing pizzas back to life here at the new kitchen that we're opening here at the brewery Tex-Mex is a very popular category and something we do really well within uh, Uncle Bear's. So I would say that would, something we hang our hat on and our slider menu. So prime rib sliders. Prime rib sliders. Definitely a go-to. And of course, wings are really good. So uh, anyway, that's that's the food angle. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, you guys, obviously Ocean Beach, for those, of, for those listening and watching that don't know, Ocean Beach won a bronze at the inaugural Arizona Craft Beer Awards. Um, so I'd love to get kind of your your feelings on, you know, on on that, and also on the awards themselves. Like, are you are you submitting more this year? Are you ex- kind of already thinking about like what you're gonna do, brew something for it? Like, give us an idea of of your thoughts on the awards. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely submit again. Um, it was a fun event. Uh, it was really cool to see 
Arizona showcased and a lot of the friends getting awards and whatnot. Um, like I said, we're always trying to better our beers. So it'll be interested, interesting to see how they fare, how they're judged this year. Um, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach to what I'm gonna submit this year. Um, like I said, I, I think if we would have entered in the sour category, I think we easily could have come home with another award. Um, not to slight anybody who uh, entered. Are you coming for Grand Canyon or Grand Avenue Brewing? Is what you're saying, right? I'm coming for everybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love it. Healthy right. competition. I, I can tell you from the experience of bringing home kind of the, the leftover beers that um, <laughs> Uncle Bear's was <laughs> well represented. Yeah, I brought home maybe like two full bags of, you know, everyone that had submitted beers. There's just leftover stuff. And I'm like, there was plenty of Uncle Bear's beer in my fridge for about a month or two. Yeah, same. And I drank it all and I loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, something that uh, I, I've, I've been meaning to ask some, some of the the brewers or brewery owners that uh, on, on these podcasts, you know how, um, you know, Johan might have this and normal people listening to this might have this. Um, you have nightmares about work, right? Oh my gosh. Does yeah, that, what, 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 what kind of, what kind of brewery nightmares or dreams uh, are you guys going through? Oh my gosh. Um, I think this one probably is going to give every person that in the brewing industry, uh, little kick in the pants but turning off the water like when you're filling your cold liquor or hot liquor tank and then you hear water rushing and then you just start running that's that's my constant in my head i'm like, i'm always thinking i hear something or in this facility when we have uh temperature fluctuate really drastically we've had our co2 line burst so just hearing that money go into the atmosphere is just a heartbreaker. Um, so that's one. Um, yeah, noises. Every little noise will set me off because, you know, if a pump's not running correctly or it's chugging or this, that, and the other, noises definitely set me off. <laughs> I, uh, I recently got into home brewing a couple months ago. I'm sure the uh, podcast audience is sick of hearing this, but uh, it's it's incredible how just having like a little homebrew operation, uh, you, you get nervous about things. The first batch of beer I ever made, um, I got... I was I was given a bottling bucket as a gift. Uh, I didn't know that maybe this bottling bucket had sat in the garage for a few years and got brittle because when I racked my fermented beer into this bucket and lifted the bucket up to to start bottling, the bottom of the bucket burst out and the beer went all over my driveway and I lost that beer completely. So I can't even imagine when you're. I mean, what? How many barrels are you brewing in here? Uh, this last year, I think we did forty two hundred. We'll Sorry. probably hit around. 62 i mean there's so many moving year. pieces right like yeah I, it's, i can't imagine <laughs> <laughs> it's it's funny though because i mean even with my guys i i'm lucky i have um experience on a three barrel then a seven barrel which we did 12 barrels on and then we have a 30 barrel four vessel system here and you just got to you can't let anything get bigger than it is. It's brewing. Brewing's brewing. It's the same. It's just volumes are changing. You got to be a little bit more careful just to make sure everybody's safe, but it's this it's it's the same process. Well, we've hit two o'clock. I think the brewer is about getting ready to open right here, guys. So I got one final question. It is, uh, what kind of Arizona beer do you guys drink outside of your own? Hmm. Wow. I, you know, I've uh, had a bunch of historic uh, Dragoon. Uh, uh, Wicked has some beer, uh, good beers over there uh, in Awatuki, our old place. Yeah, Wicked took over your old Awatuki uh -huh, location. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, and uh, the, uh, the owner there, Chip Mahoney, is a buddy of mine, and uh, and he does some uh, yeah, leadership stuff with us, which is super cool, too. So we kind of merged some of our uh, talents and uh, doing some big things together, too. But that's another that's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I'm... Like I said, I'm I'm a hop head at heart. Um, 
Uh, I love black IPAs. So, um, Mother Road. Mother Roads, yeah. That's a big one for me. Tower Station Tower is Station. a great. You know what you're going to get every time. That's a great beer that I like to drink a lot. Um, and then as a crew, we like to get out there um, and go visit our buddies and see what they're doing. So 12 West is a big one for us because we're just right around the corner. And Fire and Brimstone is just absolutely fantastic if you haven't been there as well. Um, but 12 West is fun. They do a lot of... Um, you know, funky beers, different out of the box beers um, that I like kind of give me inspiration to. Um, and then um, Wilderness, um, yeah. Jay and those guys are doing a great job out there. Um, they do a lot of stuff we don't do. I mean, we don't do a lot of saisons, um, hefts, um, you know, some of the uh, we don't have a folder. So some of those beers, I like to just kind of nerd out when I go there. Um, we always love sport 1912 and Alan Conger down there. So I love uh, drinking his, his beers where I, when I see them out in the marketplace. Yeah. Are there any breweries that you'd like to collaborate with? You want to just throw it out and manifest that right now? That's a good question. There's uh, quite a few that I haven't even been to. I mean, it just seems like we're still growing. Um, Luke was a good friend of mine that just left Ren House, um, but they're making phenomenal stuff. I like to kind of check out their facility. That um, triple they did recently is awesome. Yeah, it's oh fantastic. my gosh, it's so good. They did an oak lagered Doppelbach. I don't know if you got a chance to try it. I uh, haven't. <laughs> so good. But I'm game for everybody. I mean, I just think it's uh, it helps with growth and uh, it's more than one way to skin a cat. So it's always cool to see how people do things. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of Old Ellsworth. Yeah. We just mm -hmm. that's one that will be released uh, for Beer Week. We did our uh, Rye in the Hood again. So a Red Rye IPA um, with El Dorado and Amarillo. Another under yep. another uh, underrated brewery, just because they don't have the the reach, right? They're out in Queen Creek, and not a lot of people make the hike all the way out to Old Ellsworth, but they got some good stuff going on. When I'm up in Flag, I like to hit Dark Sky. Oh, yeah. They've got the pizza joint in there now. They yeah. partnership with, but they they've got some good stuff. And and then when they do their bottling program yeah. uh, and their aging program, pretty pretty spot on. Uh, I haven't been up there in a while. I need to get up there. My son just went skiing the other day, and and uh, popped in there, and they have he's like. Dad, they're playing Dave Matthews. I'm like, we'll get up there and sing with him. <laughs> you uh, you mentioned uh, historic earlier, and then Matt mentioned camping beers. For me, Piehole Porter has been like the the camping beer. You know, when you go up on a cold night up in Flagstaff and you just sit around the campfire and drink a Piehole Porter. Mm. Yeah, sometimes those camping trips were um, going the other way. Not, not. I wasn't near a Flagstaff brewery, so that's why we loaded up on Uncle Bear's. But, uh, guys, we really appreciate your time and uh, having us in and getting to sample the whole flight of beers here. Debo's coming out during. I sample them. I uh, had, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Johan sampled. And five, he has a pint maybe. On the side. I had a couple. <laughs> um, Debo's is coming out to Arizona Beer Week. Make sure to check out um, Uncle Bear's for the Pause for Pints program coming up. Part of Arizona on a beer week guys thank you so much uh, thank you cheers, cheers.